Welcome. Thanks, there so is. I'm so proud of everyone that they get to like everybody's learned Zoom. I don't we couldn't have done this like six years ago. It's just so hard. And people on the iPhone using Zoom. Awesome. Marianne, you get like a bingo card for hitting all the verse <laughs> this week. <laughs> And that's funny, I just was talking to Peter and uh, Kristen this morning. So we're going to be in touch with you to see if we can do something Zoom-wise in September. Awesome. Um, That'll be great. Um, and her and I are both actually going um, at the end of the month to the uh, University of Rochester. Um, I'm going to participate in the study, and she's already in it in her six months. Good, 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 good. Yeah, so that's exciting. That is great. Okay. Awesome. Uh, that it? Uh, yeah, you can, uh, you can turn off your... So, Elizabeth, I went back to the other just while I'm letting everyone in. Okay, I'll see you. Okay. Stay up there and then you can mute yourself right there. Okay. Hey, Jill. I'm, I'm Max. I'm going to back my picture. Joe, I can tell you how to change that if you want. That's okay. I like my daughters. That's it. Okay. So she's not. <laughs> so I'm Max today. All right. Because it's easy to change your name if you need to. Oh, she showed me how to do it. I had the wrong name on here. Yeah, you just click on there with the right side of your mouse. You right click on it and then you hit rename and you can call yourself whatever you'd like. You just type in. <laughs> you turn I'm, me on. So we're. Yeah, good. Laurel has become the Zoom master. Oh, now don't say that. You're going to jinx it. But <laughs> come in and feel free to say hello, and then we'll start muting ourselves for to reduce the background noise. So great to have you all here. So many names. Now it's exciting. <clears throat> big group today. Big big. Hi, Dennis. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi. Hi, Dennis. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. Bonnie, Carol, Benna, Joan, hi. Hi, hi Carol. Hi. Marianne. Hello. Max, Jill, nice to see you. Barry, hey. I don't know where Barry is, but he might be exercising or something. <laughs> there, he there he is. There he is. There he is. There's Barry. Hello. Great. Got more coming in the waiting room. <laughs> oh, somebody, Joan, you're on the beach. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. There's <laughs> Sharon just has a picture of her and, and one of my cats. That's great, Sharon. <laughs> That's awesome. That's your background. Way to go, see them girl. one at a time. Here's Barry. That is That's so awesome. Great. Yon, do you Hi. see that? Hi. Oh, oh, see, I can just have the kitty. So cute. I'm going to get the order at two, but I'm going to go to Walgreens. Oh, well, I'm just going to go with you. Yeah. <laughs> now, I'll just get out. That's great. <laughs> All right, we've got more. All over the country, they're flying in. This is so fun. What a great way to be together. Yeah. Can't believe you just muted me now. Oh, did I mute you? Yeah, that's okay. I muted myself. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> oh my God. Oh. Let's, let's mute the speaker because that's perfect. John, I love the background. Had to have the quilt. All right. Nice. Oh. Hi, Martha. Hello, Laura. How are you, friends? Hello. 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 Welcome. Hi, Joyce. 
Hello, I'm figuring out how this works. You're doing great. We've hey, got Joyce. sounds. I don't know I am. You're doing I'm great. To put my hearing aids in, so there you go. I'm doing it Good. now. Yeah, you want to make sure you hear me, Martha. That's for sure. <laughs> Mm. Joyce, your hair looks nice. It's COVID hair. Yeah. <laughs> it's getting cut off on Thursday. So they better not shut everything yeah. down this week. Yeah, right? <laughs> Got a nice group here. Oh, yeah. Nice group. Yep. Hello, I'm new here. Hi, you guys. Hi. Hi, Claire. Hi. Hi. Hi, Rosie. Hello. So once you've come on and said hello, if you don't mind muting yourself, that would be wonderful. And we will um, get that background noise reduced and we will get started in just a minute. We'll let a few more people come on since we're right at the hour, if that sounds good, Gina and Elizabeth. That's good. All right. You know, I have to say CMT, you know, patients living with CMT are some good looking people. <laughs> some good looking people. You know, someone said that to me this week on a call, or maybe oh, it was it was so funny. They're oh, like, we're, funny. we're good looking, we're happy, we're smiling, we're living oh, our best lives. That's right. <laughs> this is awesome. That's great. Well, I think we're at a pretty good spot. Let me switch to speaker view. And so I'm just people are still signing up right now. They'll come on. Let people in. Um, but if you guys are close to ready to get started, yeah, do sure. that. Let's get started. Uh, hi, everyone. Thank you so much for coming on and spending an hour um, with us. I want to thank you, Laurel. Laurel's our um, director of community outreach. And I tell you, she's master at Zoom calls. She has been on like all these meetings this week and she's giving up her Saturday also to spend time with us. So I want to thank you so much, Laura, for doing such a great job for the CMTA. Nice pleasure. Thanks, Elizabeth. So I'm Elizabeth Ouellette. My son, Johan, is on, the, on uh, the Zoom call today with us. We should talk about. He it looks like he's in San Francisco near the bridge, but he's really in the next door room watching our new kid. <laughs> And so um, I'm Elizabeth Olette. I've um, been involved for about 18 years. I'm a patient advocate and just very involved with the association. But we're not here to talk about me today. Today we're here to talk about Gina Sweeney. And Gina is a good friend. She's our director of development. And Gina started it right around the same time as I did. Didn't know her for a couple of years. It's an ongoing argument who started first, but it will never be called. <laughs> And um, Gina started out as, uh, you know, Director of Community Services. She's done Awareness Month, the branches, she's expanded them, um, expanded our patient family conferences, fundraising, Walk for CMT. Her, one of her favorite things ever is Camp Footprint that she's expanded, been very involved in. And um, in 2018, is that right, Gina? You became the Director of Development? Yes. For the CMTA and director of development is dealing with donors and um, bigger donors, pharmaceutical companies, um, you know, some of our sponsors, and she has done a phenomenal, phenomenal job with that. And today I wanted to get her on a Zoom meeting because she has so much passion for the cause and she's out there raising money and she has a gift for speaking with people and communicating and bringing people together. So I want to introduce Gina Sweeney. Thank you so much, Gina, for being on. So before we get into the meat of this meeting, I have something that I didn't tell Gina about that I was going to do, which she was afraid of. Can anybody recognize this music? Thank you. 
Hello. Welcome to the Actors Studio. We have Gina Sweeney here. Gina, before we begin your interview, I would like to know your favorite word. Hello. Gina, your favorite word, please. Hello. Hello is your favorite word. What is your least favorite word, Gina? Uh, oh my gosh, seriously, Elizabeth? My least favorite word. Yes. Um, I can't say my least favorite word. Okay, but. that's fair enough. <laughs> what is your most favorite sound, Gina? Music. Okay, what is your least favorite sound? Uh, yelling. And if heaven exists, which it surely does, when you go to those pearly gates, what are you going to ask God for? Oh my gosh, seriously, Elizabeth? Oh, what am I going to ask God for? Um, to keep a, a, a watch over, over my family. That's what yeah. I would ask God for. Thank you very much, Gina. So that was James Lipton. Uh, just a little, uh, you know, piece of time in the background. We had some uh, good answers from Gina. So, <laughs> Gina, you are, do you, like, my first question is, do you really have CMT? So the reason I ask you that is because when I first met Gina, it was at a gala. And she comes in with high heeled shoes. These, you know, she's all like, you know, all dressed up in a skirt. She doesn't have AFOs on. And I was sitting with other branch leaders at the time, like, who's that lady? Who's that lady? I'm like, that's Gina. She doesn't have CMT. I'm like, yeah, yeah, she says she does. I mean, you know, who am I to say she does? She doesn't have CMT. She doesn't, you know. So do you, I mean, do you really have CMT? <laughs> yes, I, I, I do. And uh, for the longest time, I have felt like I needed to uh, carry my genetic testing around with me because I was asked all the time. Um, and, oh, you know what? I, here, look, I don't know if you can all see this. Oh, boy. What's she showing us? Let me see. Uh, let me see. All for the cause. All for the cause. I got, like, two bad toes. Two very bad pinky toes. They're, like, this little... Um, from a botched uh, hammer toe surgery. So, and yes, I do. I have a little bit of atrophy, but that was that was really hard for me, Elizabeth, when I started at, like, not as an employee, but when I started getting involved in the CMTA, I felt like I had to um, defend my CMT a little bit, but eventually I, I got over that and was proud to, to be a voice. For, for well, I have to say that you gave me a hard time. Often I would forget that you had CMT. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let me, let whoa, me, whoa, 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 whoa. I'll tell the story because I know that like you have a habit of just like, you know, leaving things out. Not only in the CMT community was I asked, I always, always had to remind people that I have CMT, I have CMT, and Elizabeth, believe it or not, was a big one that I constantly had to remind, and one example, just one, because there's many, but I met Elizabeth in Miami, Miami uh, airport, I'm, car I'm carrying my bag, maybe rolling my bag, but I also had another bag in my hand, and it was Elizabeth's. So Elizabeth and my bag, I'm rolling. I had some boots on because it was winter in Pennsylvania and I was stomping and I was a little slow. And Elizabeth's like, Gina, come on. Like, why are you like stomping? Why are you walking like that? Can you pick up, can you pick it up please? I just stopped and I'm like, uh, hello. I have CMT, Elizabeth. Okay, like, this is the picture that I show where Gina says she has CMT. Look at those biceps. Seriously, those biceps are bigger. I meant, I meant weight training. So that's, you know, can you understand, folks, why I would say Gina doesn't have CMT, right? 
So I'm at, if you look at my biceps, it goes the opposite way, right? So, <laughs> so Jean is very strong. And it was hard at first, you know, um, and, you know, when we were doing things, I'm like, Gina, can you get these poor people with CMT at a conference cannot pour out of that jug? It's too heavy. Sit there and do it for them. <laughs> She's like, I have CMT too. I'm like, oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> but then recently, Gina, you know, CMT progresses over time. And Gina was falling a lot. And I'm like, you need AFOs, girlfriend. And she's like, I don't want AFOs. How about tennis shoes? I don't want it. Then she came out with a cane. And that experience was uh, threw everyone off. So you can't win. Gina, what was your experience with your cane when you finally used a cane? That, um, you know, that was when it was, it's probably been maybe about uh, two or, or three years. Elizabeth, you remember the time, you know, walking in uh, Fort Worth, Texas on cobblestone and everyone can relate to this. Walking on cobblestone and having CMT, it's, it's hard. It takes a lot of concentration. I mean, it's hard and I, and I fell a good amount of time, but um, I needed something, whether it be AFOs or a cane, and it took me a little bit of time to, for me to realize that. And when I did, I thought like, you know what, a cane is better suited for me um, because it just is. Like I, I would feel stronger with a cane. And I ordered one, I, had, I measured myself. It took, you know, it, it took a lot of time in finding a cane with personality. And um, I bought this cane and it came in the mail and I felt like a queen. I felt so empowered. I was so proud of myself. But what I didn't realize was when I stepped out with that cane, not so much around my, my family and friends, but in the CMT community, because when I stepped into the CMT community and I had this cane, I just saw a look on people's faces like my hero, my, my person, my, this person, like, is, is, is she getting worse? Is what's going on? And that was hard for me um, because all along I, I had CMT, but no one really saw it. They just saw me. And, um, but that's the, that's the progression of the disease, I guess. And people would come up to me and say, is she okay? You know, is she, is she going to continue to work? I said, she said, same person. She's just using something. So it's a struggle when you don't show symptoms. It's like an invisible illness. When you do show symptoms, people get worried and think you're different. So do you know, what's, you know, when were you diagnosed with CMT and uh, did you get it from somebody in your family? So, um, no, I am from a family of six and I am the only one with, with CMT. I was diagnosed when I was about 14, 15 years old. And you know, my story is just like so many. Uh, I was falling all the time. I had many uh, sprains and broken bones. And my mom just knew that this, something just was not right um, with, with me. And I, feel that I'm very, very fortunate because I was diagnosed rather quickly with my CMT by an orthopedic at Children's Hospital in Pittsburgh. Uh, the first doctor I went to thought that I had spinal bifida. And I went to this, he's like, yeah, you gotta go to Children's Hospital. So I went to Children's Hospital and I was diagnosed with CMT within 15 minutes of being in his office. So I just was incredibly lucky, but yeah, about 14, 15. So, you know, going to the doctors is often, you know, especially when you just learn you have CMT, you were very lucky because so many people here, I don't know how many, uh, just struggle with that diagnosis and people didn't know 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, what CMT was, right? So. So you have, you have CMT and I just was, I remember you telling me about a story uh, with a physician and the physician was, you know, he followed you during your pediatric years. And then one of your last visits just really astounded me in what he told you. Yeah. So, you know, I, I saw this, this orthopedic surgeon and 
He was absolutely phenomenal. But until Elizabeth's point, there was not a whole lot of information. I mean, it pulled out a book, there was a paragraph like this big, and read us what CMT is, uh, peripheral neuropathy, blah, blah, blah. And, um, but at that last appointment, he said, okay, Gina, you've aged out. You know, you're, you've aged out and it's time to find a different neurologist. But before you go, I just want to really talk to you about your, your diagnosis. You can't work. You can't have kids. You can't exercise. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't. And I left and I was like, what? Like, I'm not going to be able to do any of these things. And that really hit me um, hard. Um, and clearly I didn't listen because I'm a little, you know, I, I didn't listen. But did you for a little bit and then think about it or did you just say he's, you know, full of BS? Yeah, no, um, I, I did listen for, for a little bit. Uh, you know, I couldn't figure out, you know, I, I remember leaving and I, I, I wanted to like, okay, well, I'm gonna sit here on the sidelines and, you know, watch everybody else. And um, there was nobody else in my family. So I didn't really have anybody to ask questions to. There wasn't this amazing CMT community. And I did, I sat on the sidelines for, I don't know how long it was. And I just remember, you know, um, I was on my own already as a young lady. I had, you know, my own apartment. And I remember like, screw this, like this sucks. Like, I'm not gonna sit here and I'm, I'm not gonna watch my life go by. And um, it's crazy because the first thing that I decided that I was gonna do for myself was uh, go running. Um, and <laughs> I mean, seriously, out of all the things that I could, could choose to do, I remember putting on my tennis shoes and I went running, I went running um, I'm like, okay, I'm going to do a mile today, and then I'm going to do a mile, uh, and, and another mile the next day. And I remember I did get up to about five miles. Like, I was running. But with every run, I was like, oh my gosh, that hurts so bad. <laughs> I kept doing it until I, I found something else, and, you know, whatever it might have been at that time. But I remember that was the first thing I decided that I was going to do. I think it was because I wanted to prove... I wanted to prove him wrong. That that's an awesome quality in you to prove them wrong, right? To prove them wrong that this is not going to affect your life. So how you know you're in your twenties, you start dating. Did CMT that diagnosis is CMT? I mean, you must have felt kind of isolated, I would think, especially not having groups like I know you. I think you were involved in a local support group, right? The JD. Yes. Yeah, but not that wasn't until later. Um, you know, I was diagnosed at 14, 15, and, you know, right around that time, I had my first love, you know, and you, you think at that time, like, you're going to be with this person forever, and so he was with me along the diagnosis, and um, the majority of us, you know, were not with our first loves, and that didn't last, and I found myself at 20, 21 um, in the dating world. Now I had already been diagnosed and my mom was more uh, in tune maybe with, with my CMT, uh, but it wasn't something that we always talked about. And so I really didn't quite know what I had, but she kept saying, you know, Gina, if you're gonna be dating, you know, and if you find somebody that you really, really like, you're gonna have to like tell them about your CMT. And I'm like, what? like why like I just didn't I didn't comprehend that um and as I was dating I was having a good time but I'm not going to quite go into the whole story but um I was on a date skiing when I realized for the first time that I actually had CMT and as I'm realizing that I have CMT He's seeing me realize that I have something. I'm crying. I couldn't explain it to him. And I never heard from him again. 
And I um, realized like, oh, I guess this does matter. So I continued dating and, you know, I only brought it up when I really needed to bring it up. Um, but before I met my husband, there was another guy and I was like, oh, he's cute. You know, um, we were like hanging out for a little while and it was this big ordeal that I was going to tell him. I made like dinner. I tried to like set a romantic setting and, you know, um, made lasagna and it was a big deal. And I told him that night, I never heard from him again. And that I thought, okay, but I, I didn't let it discourage me because um, I just realized, okay, well, screw him. Look what he's missing out on, you know? And that's the, like, that's what I had. Like, you know, at first I thought it was my lasagna. I really <laughs> isn't as good as what I think it is, but um, I uh, then, you know, it happened and I met my husband, so. So it's an interesting way of handling things. I know that, you know, rejection is hard for everybody and we all deal with it in different ways. And um, a lot of times you believe what you hear and it puts you backwards. It sounds like you did not believe what you heard and you continue on with this positive attitude. And I remember asking you one time, one of your greatest accomplishments, um, coming out of uh, a, you know, young adulthood in your thinking, and you, you said something really, do you remember what you told me? It's about how you continue to live life and you stop believing what others were saying and telling you about you? Yeah, I... Um... I stopped believing the people that told me that I can't. I stopped believing um, the negativity that was around me. Um, and I think for me, even in my life right now, uh, the day that I made that decision, I've lived by that. I, I have lived by that, that decision um, when I was 20 years old. That's powerful. Yeah. That's really powerful. Yeah. And so then, you're married and um, you have children. Yes. Can you tell I, us about those kids? For, it'll be 22 years um, in September. And I have two girls. I have uh, Haley, which will be 20 years old in November, which is crazy. Um, Haley's in college, you know, just doing her thing. I've never had Haley tested for CMT, um, and believe me, we have talked about it. Um, it had, I, I decided as a parent that I wanted um, Haley to make that decision because she's not showing any signs of CMT. And for me, again, my, my choice, I didn't want to be selfish um, in having her, her diagnosed um, or tested. And we have been like, we walked into like a blood drawn with a genetic testing kit and a form and everything. And at the very last minute, Haley changed her mind. And I respected that. I threw the kid away and away we went. But Haley has not had it easy. I met Haley had a whole spinal surgery, right? Yes. Yeah, she had uh, fusion. Very, very severe scoliosis. Um, we talked about her CMT, and that's what brought up the, the genetic testing. Uh, but because her, her scoliosis was incredibly severe, um, the neurologists told me that her CMT uh, would be uh, pretty severe as well. Like, we would, she would have already shown signs of CMT um, because of the severity. She has 22... Um, screws and two rods in her back. But I tell you, she was lucky to have you as a mom because she pulled through that and she's doing well now. Yeah. She's doing very well. Yeah, she's, she's doing uh, amazing. I'm incredibly proud of her. Incredibly How about proud. Riley? How's she doing? Uh, well, Riley, she's 15 years old um, and I am in serious trouble because she is a whole lot like me and she is <laughs> and she's going to give me a run for her money. Um, 
Um, but she uh, was diagnosed with CMT when she was a month old. And that was not something that I had set out to do at that time. Um, if I didn't, if Bradley was not tested as at a month old, I would have had her tested when she was about three or four because she was um, presenting with CMT, I think, at that time. But Riley was born with a, a very serious uh, lung condition, uh, life-threatening lung condition uh, called pulmonary lymphangiectasia. It has nothing to do with CMT. Uh, but the, the babies that are born with uh, lymphangiectasia are, uh, they typically die within the first eight weeks of life or they're born stillborn. So um, Riley's 15 and she's just rocking it out. But with pulmonary lymphangiectasia comes with um, a lot of other uh, diseases and disorders. So they did a full genetic testing on Riley. Um, and I found out that Riley um, had CMT uh, when she was three and a half months. Well, yeah, uh, I guess it was three and a half months old because uh, she was in the hospital for the first three and a half months of her life. So, so she has this life-threatening lung thing and then she's diagnosed with CMT. I meant, how did, how did you feel when you she had that diagnosis. Uh, you know, I will, uh, for the rest of my life, I will never forget the moment um, that I was told that Riley had had CMT. Um, and to your point, yeah, like she had this very life-threatening illness and, you know, sitting in the doctor's office, I'm already so emotional, but then the doctor said, we weren't even there for freaking like three minutes. And he's like, hi, Mr. and Mrs. Sweeney, we'll check out Riley, but I want you to first sit down, we'll have a conversation. I didn't even have my butt on the chair and he's handing me this paper and he said, I just wanna let you know that Riley has an extra copy of her PMP 22 gene. At right at that moment, I literally felt like someone just punched me right in the gut, like just right in the gut. And but at the same time, I felt that punch in my mind and in my soul, and every being of me was like, "Oh hell no, this is not going to work for me. I am going to do something." And I'm going to do something starting tomorrow. I am going to fundraise. I am going to create awareness. And I'm going to educate. Because with lymphangiectasia, I've got to get her first through her first seven years. I can do that as her mom because you can grow out of lymphangiectasia. But with CMT, I will be damned. And I will do everything that I can do so she can live a better quality of life than I'm living today. So do you think, you know, it's interesting you say that because I know Riley struggles with knee issues and I mean she has a long road ahead of her, I think, uh, according to what you've told me, right? Yeah, um, I think uh, I, I, I try to remember, but it's hard to remember. Um, I think Riley is definitely presenting um, more than I did at her age. Um, I used to sprain my ankles. Um, I fell and broke some bones, but Riley, uh, because of her gait and the way that she walks, she dislocates her knee. And last summer alone, let's see, I don't know, what summer, 10 weeks? I don't know. Riley in eight weeks dislocated her knee 10 times. Dislocated, like her whole kneecap came out. And with every time um, and that hurt, that, that hurt her, and it hurt me. And what do you tell uh, Riley about CMT? I mean, she knows the whole thing. Obviously, you're very involved. Do you? Yeah, so, I mean, 
I think from as as long as I can remember being Riley's mom, um, she knew she had CMT. And I think it's because, you know, I've talked about my CMT, um, not every day, or I don't use my CMT, like, oh, you know, well, mommy can't do that. But I think my CMT has taught my girls um, compassion and patience. Uh, because it takes me way longer to zip up their coat than their daddy. Um, but um, I, I'm, Riley knows that I'm there for her. And Riley um, is comfortable to me. For, it's kind of cute, actually, because she'll be like, hey, mom, do you have, like, tingling in your fingertips, like, right here? Um, hey, mom, I got a leg cramp last night. Do you get those? Um, I want her to be able to have those just open questions and, and not fear. And, you know, um, I tell her, but I, no, I don't tell her anything. She, I've presented it and we're in this together. I tell her actually that we wear the same jersey. There you go. There you go. Like on the same team. So you are so passionate. Passionate is just like extremely enthusiastic, right? And do you think you would be this enthusiastic if Riley had not been diagnosed with CMT? Um, well, you know, the, the, the funny thing is when I talk to people today, you know, of course, you know, I always talk about Riley and um, I share, you know, the story, a little bit of the story here and there, and I think that's, you know, people think like, oh, that's why Gina is in, that's what brought Gina to the CMTA, but it's not, actually. Um, I got involved with the CMTA probably about four years before Riley was born, and I remember I got this little flyer in the mail and it said, Johnstown PA support group starting in your area. And I was like, what? Like, there's no- There's a lining, right? Like me, really? I have never met anybody. And keep in mind, I'm like just breaking into my thirties and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is, this is amazing. And so I go and that's where I met my, one of my favorite people, J.D. Griffith um, and I went to the meeting and I had, my hand was constantly going up. I mean, I just like, I had all these questions and um, JD is the one who was like, girl, you got some fire and you got some wit and I, I want you to help me with this, with this support group. And um, I actually was creating awareness um, a little bit before I even had Riley. But because I was able to start literally the day after um, Riley was born is because I was already connected to the CMTA. So I already had that relationship. Um, I already had that connection. Um, and I had already known what I could do. Um, well, I like it when you talk mm -hmm. about um, connection. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to catch you off. Sorry about that. I just had that word and I didn't want to forget. But connection, you and I have done a lot. When I first met you, like I didn't know about her when I first met her. Like, look at this. The first time we spent any time, I don't know how she finagled her way into the going to, on this trip with us because she wasn't invited initially. Then all of a sudden it's like Gina's going. I'm like, okay, whatever. She was at Cooter Fest and she jumped. Cooter Fest is a turtle fest festival in Florida. And this, she'll do anything for the CMTA. So she helped me. I, I was helping her get this turtle outfit on. I'm like, whatever. But we've had a lot. <laughs> if it spreads awareness. Raise money, man. The things that you and I have done for the cause, I mean, the list is just crazy, but. We were going to Cooter Fest and Jerry Cross, God bless his soul, um, a train, it was turtle, and we needed like a draw to the booth. You know, we already had this turtle train with little carts, and you know, it was super cute, but we needed a draw. And I recall Elizabeth, they're like, Gina, why don't you be a turtle? <laughs> Sign me up. I can totally be a turtle. I will go get a turtle costume. 
costume. Well, of course, the only turtle costume that I could find was the one that Elizabeth showed, showed you. I'm like, oh, yeah, she comes with a sexy turtle costume. I'm like, what the heck is that? And I'm at, seriously, I thought it was going to be a big hump and, you know, but. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, Laurel, could you bring up the slide? Gina's done a lot of fundraising. She's our director of development, but what we've done together is, has been really fun. And she's also done a lot of like crazy things we both have. And I think we've been um, inspirational to each other. Could you just tell us a couple, you know, just a couple of these, these slides, a couple of these pictures, what they're about, because we've had fun. And I think part of the success um, that we've had is having fun together and doing things together that make a difference. So go ahead, Gina, uh, what are some of these pictures? So um, I'll start with the bottom left with the gunky goo um, on the, the dude's head there. Um, I, a good number of years ago, I started a school program called Stepping It Up for First TMT, where I would go in uh, and I would educate the whole student body um, in, in CMT in a very fun way encourage them to to fundraise um, and I gave them prizes um, in the end and this particular one was a prize and whoever raised the most money um, got to dump a uh, slime on the principal's head uh, All right. in that school program oh I don't have the, the numbers but I, I think over 70,000 uh, elementary kids was they, I taught them about CMT, and uh, the amount of money that was raised was absolutely incredible. But with every donation, I got very emotional. Um, I, you know, used to get a ten cents um, in an envelope, and that ten cents was probably found in a couch from a kid that wanted to give something to to the cause because they got to meet me. And they wanted to, they wanted to help me. And um, then I had kids raising five thousand um, dollars within their circle. So I'm very proud of that program. Uh, it was just, a, just a lot of fun. Uh, the second photo in um, with the pie that uh, is Camp Footprint. Uh, that is Camp Footprint. We're going into the fifth year. Uh, that's my uh, one of the partners in crime, um, Jonah Berger, who, who helps with camp. That's just amazing, amazing. Uh, the next photo, um, this right here, this is that uh, fundraising conference that, that we were at, wasn't it, Elizabeth? Yeah, it was. <laughs> And they're like, well, you can go over here and you can get this. And Elizabeth, like I said, we will literally do anything just for that. But I don't want to talk about you and I until we get up to the next one here. Um, the next one, the Hakalulu uh, Cafe, whatever it's called, um, that's my family. And that's, I'm working for, for my family, including my husband. Um, and the one with me, Claude Wig, um, on here, standing by Elizabeth, this um, is one of the branch leader conferences that Elizabeth and I used to put on together, where we pull all of the branches all across the country uh, together to, to educate um, him. Uh, the, the, I was going to, already moving on to the next photo, I just want to talk about the next photo. Um, and uh, that was absolutely so much fun. Um, and we did a 70s night dance and just got everybody excited and riled up and, you know, for the cause. And um, the next one over is the cycle for CMT. Uh, that is Elizabeth's virtual uh, event this year. Um, if you're interested, contact Elizabeth Olette um, at <laughs> cycleforcmt.com. Uh, but this is her son, Johan, who I met a good number of years ago. He's um, actually interning now for the CMTA, um, but they're, they're my family. I get really 
Johan, you're just, just absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. Um, the one with me in the foot was uh, 2018. I walked around uh, New York City uh, dressed in a foot. I almost got arrested, but uh, that's, a, that's a time for another story. I was trying to create awareness. It was Awareness Month. I challenged the community. They came through and I, I put on a foot and I, I passed around uh, what is CMT information. Let's go to one, one more photo and then we're gonna we're gonna keep going just in the interest of time. Uh, this is more. Uh, let's end it on a fun note. The one with me looking like I just woke up with the fringe on my face. <laughs> um, you know, Elizabeth and I are all for saving a dollar or two for the CMTA. So we often, when we travel, we'll just get a room. I get um, one bed, she gets the other. But this particular night, we were watching a movie, and uh, I think we both we were sleeping together, or fell asleep, or whatever. And I had woke up, and <laughs> she did smile. I got a new iPhone. Click. Now she took this picture, but I see this picture every. And I mean, what there's, I think the ringtone there for a while, like I would call it, and this phone, uh, this photo came up. She even showed it at a conference one time, but that's. <laughs> I think it's Johan's uh, phone, uh, picture of you when you call. <laughs> we have the one in curlers, too. So don't ever send me a picture of you. <laughs> you never know where it will end up. Thank you, Gina. There's just really some fun times that, that kind of thinking about. You know, there's one last story I'd like to talk about, and it was really meaningful. It was our trip to Washington. And Gina and I were speaking at a um, group in Washington and uh, you know I would get up and speak and then she would do half of the, the meeting and I just remember this elderly man being wheeled in by a caretaker he had a blanket on it was cold and and um, he fell asleep during Gina's presentation and I'm just like I'm gonna give her a lot of you know <laughs> a lot, a lot. I'm just gonna you know kind of tease her about this and then Gina why don't you tell the story because it's a really beautiful story uh, so I, well, when we, well, Elizabeth and I present together, you know, she typically goes first and then <laughs> I ended with, I, I ended with the like, Woo -hoo! you know, let's, let's do this, you know, like we, we got this together and, um, this gentleman was sitting there and he literally fell asleep during my presentation. I'm like, what in the world is going on here? Like, this is just, I, I, I don't know. Like, when I'm done talking, I'm going to give him a hard time. He's 92 years old, but I'm going to give him a hard time. Like, you know, I'm talking about getting involved and fundraising and trying to have a little bit of fun. So when we were done, you know, Elizabeth went one way. She went the safe way. You know, she went over. Oh I see out of the corner of my eye, I see Gina doing a beeline to this elderly man. I'm like, oh my God, Gina, leave him alone. Like, let him leave. He's tired. Go ahead. Like, what is she doing? And I'm like talking to other people. I'm just like kind of watching her from the corner of my eye. I went over to give him a hard time because he fell asleep during my presentation. Like, I went over and I'm like, you know, hey, what? Uh, hello? you don't want to hear about like you know I so I was teasing him a little bit and he had a, a caretaker with him and she uh, began to talk about um, Jim and you know she said well Jim you know are you gonna tell Gina who you are and he's like hmm I don't know maybe I could maybe I should and I said well I'm not going anywhere until you do and he begins to tell me about his life, um, just a fascinating man, but he was also the owner um, and creator of Thermo Rest Camping Equipment. And I knew at that time that, you know, he could be a huge different maker, difference maker in um, the lives of people living with CMT. And I had said to him, well, you know, I really think you should get involved in the CMTA or maybe you should get involved in the CMTA. And he's like, well, I just don't know. 
um, I want to get to know you. I, I, I need to spend a little bit more time. I forget exactly what he said, but so a couple weeks later, I, I flew out to see Jim um, back to Seattle. And uh, I realized while I was with him that he wanted no information whatsoever on CMT or what the CMTA was doing for research. He knew he was older. He knew that um, he had some giving potential, um, but it was halfway through the weekend that I realized that Jim just wanted to get to know me as a person. Um, he wanted to uh, know that he could trust me, that I was authentic, um, and we watched movies together. We ate pizza. Um, he showed me pictures of his extended family. He didn't have any children. Um, and we had the best time. And uh, right when I was leaving, uh, he wasn't feeling well. And he said, I'm, I'm going to go lay down, uh, but I want you to, to give me a call next week. I said, okay. So um, I gave him a call and he decided to leave half of his estate to, to the CMTA. So that was... So Gina, I, you know, that, that's a great story and it really helped us out a lot. And, you know, I tell, you know, it's not easy asking for money. It's just, for me, it isn't. And it seems like, I remember a conference in Las Vegas. Um, I look and Gina is in the elevator selling those little plastic bracelets to people that have just gambled. It's like midnight for like $20 each. And she's like carrying 20s around. She goes, look what I got. I'm like, get rid of those t-shirts. She's selling them to the branch leaders. So she has no qualms about going out and asking for money. And so I'm like, did you go to fundraising school or something? And, but you have a different way of looking at fundraising because it's just, what is it? Yeah, I, well, I, um, I did not go to fundraising school. I, I did not. And I think, you know, I, when I came into the CMTA, there was not that, that, um, when you're selling something, it's a little different. And if they're gambling, they certainly can give me $50 for a CMT bracelet. That's how I look at it. That's, that's my way of thinking. You know, if they're willing to waste their money on a gambling table. Um, but I do remember that t-shirt uh, incident, Elizabeth, and you said, Gina, just can you get rid of these? And we didn't even really know each other yet. And I, and I stood up, I'm like, who wants a shirt, $20 a piece? And everyone's eyes like got like this big, like, oh my God, what is she doing? But if I don't sell it, and if I don't ask, who else is? You know, who else is going to, to step up for us? Um, you know, so selling is, is definitely different. And, but I don't even consider myself a fundraiser. And that's, that's the crazy thing. I just, I just don't. Um, I don't, I've never, other than selling things, I've never asked someone for money in particular. Um, I have asked, would you like to be involved? What can you do to get involved? Um, and when I talk to people, I, my ultimate goal is when I work, when I'm working with someone, I'm working with that particular person and that particular person only. Um, I want them to feel me. I want them to feel my excitement for the CMTA. I want them to, to feel the, um, the passion and the energy and the enthusiasm that I have. And, you know, that's um, when, I, when I talk to somebody, that is my hope. Um, and, you know, Jim uh, Lee, um, because I'm authentic, you know, he, he felt that. And um, so I don't ask for money. I don't even feel like I fundraise. I just want people to be part of the CMTA and their cause. And everybody has different means of, of giving, whether that's fundraising or a donation. Right, and I, uh, on Facebook recently, I, I, I put, I put up the paper that Glenn Pfeffer came up with um, after that big meeting in Chicago. We've been working so hard on it for two years and so proud to throw it out there. And 
people just can't, a couple people just responded, oh, doctors just want to pat themselves on a, their, on their, each other's back. And, you know, you keep saying you, you're going to have a cure. And I'm like, like, it's not like I'm here selling some foreign project. This is something I believe in. And that we have kids, we have family, we have community. We have the whole CMT community, it's just like our family. We know so many people with CMT. And the reason I think that people are willing to, to, to give money to our associations, because we are authentic. We all know people who have seen, we either have CMT on the board, on the staff, um, in the community, have a loved one with CMT. So we're trying as hard, it just, it, it made me really discouraged. And it was just a moment in time, and I know not to get caught up in Facebook things, but it made me discouraged. And I looked at you, and I think a lot of your um, success, and my success, has come because we believe in the cause, and we have kids, or we have we know other people in the community that we really care about, like every single person here on this call. And uh, Gina, I think we've had a lot of fun too, and I just want to talk about the ripple effect. You know, you don't know, when you talk about CMT to somebody, you don't know where that's going to go. You might just have that stop there, or it may go on and on and on. So Gina and I went to Vermont. I come, I'm from Vermont, and I go there every summer. I'm like, why don't you come? We'll do an Awareness Month video. So she came to Vermont, and we did this Awareness Month video. We had nothing planned. We just did it. And... Um, we'll show it to you in just a second, but I want to say that after doing this video, my family got involved in doing this video. And from this one trip to Vermont that Gina made, my family did this video. Then my brother started thinking, what more can I do for the CMTA and for my nephew, Johan? What can I do? And he started the Cycle for CMT, which is now the Cycle and Walk for CMT. A million dollars later, this is our seventh year, and I feel very um, emotional about that because it's a family effort, and my brother stood up, and we're doing it together, but you don't know who you're touching when you're talking about CMT and what will come of that, and we all want a cure, and we're getting there, but it's taking some time. But Laura, please, before I start breaking out in tears, let's show the video. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Ouellette. Hi, Gina Sweeney. We are in my hometown of Burlington, Vermont, and we are going to check out to see how many people know about CMT. It's Awareness Month! Woohoo! What do you think CMT stands for? Country Music yeah. Television. Um, certified Massage Therapist. Do you know what CMT stands for? No. No idea? What do you think it stands for? No, I don't. No. CMT? CMT. CMT. Yes? Have you ever heard of Charco Marie Two? No. No? I'm with Buddy. I don't know. Um, I think it stands for Country Music Television. Sam T. C M T. C M T. No. So now you see that CMT is not well known in the community. Shark on Marie Tooth? Huh? What? what? Give a shout out that CMT is not country music TV. What? No Willie Nelson? Let the world know that CMT is an inherited neuropathy. Inherited neuropathy! September is a time to get online. It's up to us to put up a fuss. Future, Future generations, generations are, are counting, counting on, on us. Us, 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 us. The CMTA is leading the way to keep this disease at bay. We're working hard to make you aware, and we hope that you really care. So put up a fight. Let's do this right. Let others know about our plight. And to end this rhyme, we're asking you one more time. Call a friend. Tell your family. Join our community. Like us on Facebook. Hand out brochures. Teach your teacher. 
Go to www.cmtausa.org. Yeah. I just am so proud of my family and she, you know, you inspired them. I think we both did, but you coming, that would have never happened. So I'd like you to wrap it up and tell people, you know, your, your passion is just, um, so contagious and I want to thank you and it's been great working with you all these years and I look forward to a couple more <laughs> but um why don't you wrap it up and then we'll take some questions if we have time the first thing that I want to say Elizabeth's family is just absolutely phenomenal but the second thing I want to say is when they were rhyming there was no music playing uh, keep in mind Elizabeth and I were like just telling them just to just to get into it <laughs> So like, if you know like what was happening, and but Elizabeth and I were up at three in the morning just thinking of this rhyme, and um, I think how I would wrap this up that um, don't believe you can't. Don't believe you can't because if I believe that I wouldn't be sitting here now. Um, every single person with CMT and their family can change the world every single person and um that's it thank you thank you gina you're a superstar i wanted to leave a few more uh some some questions um martha i think uh, laurel go ahead you have the, the control so um i see martha had a question i'm gonna switch back to gap review so i can see if anyone had their hands up Ma martha did you have your hand up oh let me unmute you Oh, I'm having some trouble unmuting you. Um, I don't know why that's not working. Where's I lost Martha? Martha, are you able to unmute yourself? Um, let's see. You gotta unmute everyone. Oh, brilliant. Okay. Um, all for so muted though. For some reason, my host duties don't seem to be working. Participants are muted. Can okay. to unmute themselves? Right? Yeah, so I'm having some issues with my uh, hosting controls. Good. I, I jinxed you. Okay, is Ms. Martha still there? I hear her. Martha? Okay. All right, we'll, we'll come back. Any other questions? For Elizabeth or Gina? Elizabeth. Yes. <laughs> was, oh, I'm sorry. This was for Elizabeth. Okay. Uh, was that one person that was nasty to you, my mom? Oh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know who it was, actually. <laughs> I would have never said it if I had known that it was your, your mother, but I don't know who it was. No, it wasn't. It was somebody in France. And then there was another okay. guy. So it wasn't, you know, no, no, no. It was in French. It was in French. And I was glad it was in French. She's like, there's nothing new here. And, you know, this, I've had my feet surgically, you know, altered and that, et cetera. <laughs> it sounds exactly like my mother. Well, that's, that's unfortunate. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, guys, don't be shy. You got us here. Oh, there's John. John White. Oh, I saw John. Hi, John. Any questions? No? I don't have any questions. I just want to be invited to Vermont for the next one. Who wrote the lyrics <laughs> in the rap song? Oh my gosh. What are the words to it? What? It's an inherited neuropathy. Inherited <laughs> neuropathy. Today is the time. To, I, I, I thought the younger kids stole the show in that. They were so good. Yeah. The one why they had all that. And my brother was just like. <laughs> Chris was going for it. It was great. Well, listen, I want to thank you, Gina, for um, 
your time and your effort. You're making a huge difference in the world of CMT. And um, I'm usually not emotional, so I don't know what's going on here. But um, it's just your love for me. That's what it is. It's yeah. Okay. Well, that's the way to dry those tears. <laughs> <laughs> it is. And I've, I've, um, we're not only colleagues, but we're friends, and we've not, we've had a lot of fun. And sometimes, you know, in CMT is not fun. It really, it just is not. And when you can have fun and bring joy to each other and to other people, it makes this journey worth every moment. So um, we won't give up ever. ever. And um, for you and for our kids and for ourselves. And I just want to thank every one of you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone that hasn't actually met Gina in person, she is a very infectious personality. Once you get to know her, it's like, it's like boom. Uh, oh, you're like a new light in your life. You are infected once you meet her. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everyone, for uh, joining us, and I'll, I'll be in touch for our new, next Zoom meeting. Thank you. Thanks for being here, guys. You. Great to Thank see you. you. Thanks, Gina and Elizabeth. See you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.